Welcome to The Conversation, everyone. I'm Bill Weir here in New York, and today we are talking about the most powerful man in the free world, Barack Obama, uh, juggling several different storylines uh, today, and joining us for this chat, Alexander Burns of Politico. What's the significance of this, uh, of this little meeting, and what, what do both sides hope to get out of it? Well, for Brewer, she has gotten a lot of political mileage out of her standoff with the White House over her state's uh, law cracking down on illegal immigration. There's less of an obvious upside here for the president uh, because he has uh, he's trying to juggle, on the one hand, a very, very clear popular support for more stringent restrictions on illegal immigration. On the other hand, uh, his administration has come down very, very strongly to say this law in Arizona is probably not constitutional. Right. So that I don't I, I can't imagine they're going to come to any sort of uh agreement after just this little sit down today, right? If there's an upside for the president, it's that he probably gets to walk out of the meeting and say, uh, look, I listened to Governor Brewer's perspective on this. I still have mine. Uh, the Department of Justice still has uh, its take on the situation, but all voices have been heard. The front page of Politico this morning, uh, comparing the president, as we shift to another story, comparing the president a little bit, uh, Richard Daley, former machine mayor in Chicago, and a little bit Barney Fife, <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, yet another revelation of yet another Democrat uh, that the White House tried to clear the field uh, in a Senate race. Last night, uh, Andrew Romanoff, he's a former uh, state legislative leader out in Colorado, he's challenging incumbent Senator Michael Bennett in the Democratic Senate primary out there. He blasted out this unbelievable email that Jim Messina, uh, the president's advisor, sent him, offering him uh, consideration for a series of administration jobs in exchange for not running uh, in that race. Just like in Pennsylvania, where you saw a similar situation in the Democratic primary there, the White House is trying very hard, or has tried very hard, to clear primary fields Democratic incumbents who have some kind of popularity problem, and they're not doing a great job of it, both yes. Pennsylvania and here. It really has kind of blown up in their faces. Yeah, thus the Barney Fife uh, comparison <laughs> right there. What should he be doing? He's going back down there tomorrow, his second visit in, in as many weeks. Uh, you know, I asked this a, a few times. At what point does this become his Katrina? Obviously, the loss of life is not comparable between the two disasters, but what can he do? You know, Bill, of all the stories that we've discussed, this is clearly the one that the White House has to be most nervous about right now. It does look like the oil is very, very close to the coast of uh, northern Florida. Uh, when it starts to, to hit there, you're going to see a very strong reaction, the same way you did in Louisiana. The Coast Guard saying today that they have made some progress in cutting uh, the pipe in that well uh, to try a new containment technique, but it's just very, very inexact. Uh, if the president gets really lucky, they may be able to slow the flow of oil, but at this point it looks like they need to be worrying about damage control for the president's uh, image handling this crisis as much as anything else. Do you anticipate any change in his tone and his approach in, during tomorrow's visit? You know, we've just seen this story so many times before with this president, going back just after he took office with the AIG bonus uh, scandal. There was so much public anger around that, and the president uh, tried to be a reassuring, level-headed presence, but he didn't quite connect with where people were emotionally. Uh, we'll see whether he tries to do that this time, but it's just not his natural register. If the public clearly felt the president had the crisis under control, he might be able to get away with being this kind of cool, collected, uh, unemotive guy. But given that there's still this sense that things are just out of hand, it's not really clear that act is going to work. Yeah. All right, Alexander, we appreciate your insight as always. I look forward to Thanks reading so your work throughout the day. Appreciate it.